Hey guys, it's your buddy Ben coming to you again from Ben's Audio Cave. And I'm happy to see you guys. Happy New Year. Happy uh, 2022. Hopefully this is going to be a good one. So I'm going to start it out right and I'm going to, we're going to talk about some nerdy stuff today. Uh, I don't have any music for you. I don't have anything else. I do have some roll up your sleeves and let's do some nerdy DIY stuff. So what are we going to do? Let's talk about it. We're going to adjust the DC balance on a servo controlled direct drive turntable. This one. Fisher 60MT6330. I have it right down here. And this is the vinyl engine uh, source material for it. It tells you all about how wonderful this turntable is and everything. Um, bottom flutter is really low. The rumble minus 70 dB, about correct for this time period. 120 magnetic pole motor. That's one thing I thought was interesting about this and then all the other things. Now we do have a service manual here, as you notice. And this is what's going to allow us to do this. So, as you can see, I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. You know, it tells us everything about our turntable, uh, the parts list, the motor control board. This electrical adjustment is what you're going to be looking for. It is going to tell you, you know, there's going to be a little board in here. Uh, we've got our servo control, speed control, and our DC balance adjuster and our oscillating coil. And then our op amp, and it shows us, you know, the uh, three test points that we're going to be looking at. It's got some instructions. We'll go over those here in just a minute. Okay. This is what I will tell you. Before you open up your turntable and start making these adjustments, go on to Vinyl Engine, look at your service manual, find your service manual. If you can't, you can try to find it on Google or somewhere else, or you can drop a comment and I'll try to help you locate it. That's fine. I don't mind the help. These adjustments are not the easiest. They're not the hardest. Um, what I will tell you that I found is I've already kind of adjusted this, but what these are for, let's say you have an older turntable and it used to keep speed really well. And it's not this running fast or slow. This one has pitch control, so I can kind of, you know, all right, but it's not consistent. It's kind of warbling. It's going back and forth. You can hear it kind of, now that's a very technical term, but you can actually see it on the strobe if so equipped to where it kind of goes back and forth and there's all this speed variance. Turntable is generally not designed to work like that. If you're on a direct drive, especially, that's kind of what I'm catering this to and it's not course locked, then chances are some of your components can be getting a little old. Maybe your capacitors, your resistors are not in the same tolerance they used to be. But, you know, these are things with, if they're in spec, you can adjust them. So I've already ad actually adjusted this one once. It was difficult. This is what I'll tell you. You're going to need a volt, on volt ohmmeter. Okay, I've got a pretty, pretty decent one here. It's a Metex. It is not a fluke meter. This is a little bit cheaper one, but it's still a good one. And I've used it in very many things for this, uh, for, for this particular exercise, we're going, after we're doing some reading ahead, we're going to need to read millivolts. So make sure your volt ohm meter has that and not just the two volts. Cause we're going to need to get fairly precise on this. The other thing is, is if your turntable is not keeping proper speed and it's not a belt drive, if it's a belt drive, always check your belt first and it's not got a pitch control, then chances are we can find the place to adjust this rotational speed in the turntable itself. And these are simple devices are not terribly hard to take apart. Now, all that being said, I need to make this disclaimer. Before you open up your turntable, make sure you take the proper precautions. Make sure if you are plugging in, you're working with live voltage. If you feel uncomfortable, give it to a technician to service it. If you want to roll up your sleeves and service your turntable, awesome. Do so at your own risk and know all the risks before you do it. Okay? Very important. Now then, um, 
Today, I've got the speed pretty much on here. Keep in mind too, these are little pots. They're like anything else. Uh, if, if you've ever dealt with a scratchy volume control on a vintage receiver, you know, you work that volume control backward and forward, backward and forward. All of a sudden, some of the static goes out of it, starts working again. If it's really dirty, then sometimes some of the channels can quit working and you just work the volume control, they come back, that's a little scratchy. Sometimes people take deoxid and spray it into their potentiometers, into their volume controls, and it cleans it right up. Yeah, kind of, same can kind of be done here, but if you're going to use deoxid, don't use the high flash stuff. Make sure you get the stuff that's for small things on circuit boards that will not eat the epoxy circuit boards up. If you do, then you're going to ruin your electronics. You also don't want to spray deoxid with anything energized because ouch, shock, bad electronics, go boom. No, don't do that. Um, so that being said, I will say when I opened this guy up, it was very bad off speed. Um, the tolerances were out by over 25% and they've gotten a little bit better. I have found with this one, since we're adjusting two things at once, man, it would have been so much easier if I had two volt meters, but I don't, and I don't know if you do. So I'm going to just assume you don't. And we're going to do it the hard way. Okay. And I'm going to show you kind of how this works and we're going to get started. So I'm going to refocus the camera and we're going to get going. All right, guys. Awesome. All right, guys, I've kind of trained this camera. You're not going to see a whole lot of me on this turntable. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to have to disassemble this guy. And let me go down here a little bit more. It kind of shows you the exploded diagram, but I'll show you how I disassemble this one. So first things first, let's get rid of this dust cover. We don't want to break it and it's just going to be in the way. Now, for this part of the exercise, we are not going to need this platter on here because it's not going to be rotating. We're just going to be measuring voltages. So I'm going to take off the platter mat and this little beauty ring, set it aside. Now I'm going to set off the platter. This particular Fisher MT6330 does not have a locking mechanism. If you have like a Marantz 6300, some of these, just these two little circles right here, they'll have like two little clips you pull right here. This one does not. So this one simply, well, I'm going to say that. You simply push on the spindle and it comes right off. And as you can see, this is a one kilogram platter. It's got kind of a, a magnetic ring here. That's what these motors used to do their job. This is the motor assembly. But now we're uh, finished. Now, here is the thing. We are going to need to turn this turntable on. And this one is a, it is not a manual. It is a semi-automatic. So putting the arm over there does that. Notice I have also removed the head shell off here because I do not want to take a chance in messing up my cartridge. One other thing we can do as well to make life easier is we can take off this counterweight here and it makes our arm a little bit heavier, but it also doesn't mean, make it flop around as much. So I'm going to kind of set this to the side too. We'll have to recalibrate that. That's no big deal. I mean, we're taking turntables apart at this point. So now, the first thing we're going to do, let's read up a little bit. Although the two adjustments below are performed at the factory, be sure to recheck each adjustment whenever the printed circuit boards are moved or repaired. Rotation adjustment, it tells us how to adjust the rotation. If the pitch control is like way out, if the pitch control is way out, it could be worse. But it tells DC balance adjustment. It says, remove the turntable. Here, let me put this bigger. The unit can be placed vertically, up and down. That's what we're going to do. Connect a VC, a DC voltmeter between number 10 here and the test point, And then terminal 7 and the test point. Adjust first. VRO3 and then VRO2 for minimum DC voltage. The value should be less than 10 millivolts DC when simultaneously measured with 2 DC VTVM. I don't got to. So I'm going to have to measure them one at a time. 
No big deal. So, before I plug this in, I'm going to take it apart. Let me show you some things that aren't in the manual really quickly. First of all, let me sit this guy up here to where it's not going to fall. This foot, this foot is wonky. I tried to repair it. I didn't do so hot. Okay, let me do this. Okay. So now then, I'm going to use my snap-on because I've had this apart a million times. If you see like a cover like this and you can follow the screws around it, chances are this cover just covers something that's attached here. Your feet, these feet are attached here. So really the screws I'm gonna to to take out is this screw, this screw, this screw, this screw, this screw, just the perimeter screws. I've had it apart before, so I know. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out my screws. I'm gonna take out this one. And one of the things I find helpful to do, and you can't really see me do this, is I will put my screws kind of in an order that they came out, so I know where they go in. So I'm gonna put this one beside this one, kind of at the top. Okay. Aha, and one more. The dreaded middle screw. It's not dreaded, I just say that. Okay, now this bottom should come right off. And it does. And voila, just like that. That's all our turntable is really made of, guys. Not a whole lot. Notice, this one, made by CEC. A lot of, a lot of CEC tables. Uh, of the time period. Now, let me see if I can set this right here just a little and then I will move this. Okay, so this is the board we're going to be working with. Look at the layout. In this one, and hang on, I'm going to make my iPad not flip because that's, I'm using it as my manual. Okay. If you look, this is exactly the layout that we have. We have VR01. There's our servo control. There's our op amp. Here are the two adjustment knobs for the balance. And if we notice over here, uh, we have, and they're numbered, test point seven, or point seven, TP for the test point. And then we have number 10, right, that's number 11, number 10, right there. Kind of have to move that a little bit. It's, it's number 10's right here, so 10, seven, orange, yellow, and our test point. Now, like I said, this would have been a lot easier if I had two volt ohm meters, but I do not. And that's okay, because maybe you do not either. Now, here comes the, not nerve wracking point, but the point where you start being a little bit whoop, careful, as I say, as I drop everything that I have. So now, to test this, it's going to have to be energized. To energize it, we must plug it in. Make sure nothing is touching. Nothing is touching. Okay. So here we go. Plugging it in. And even though that this meter's going a bit, little bit back and forth. It is accurate. We can kind of power cycle it and let it reset. There we go. So, let's go ahead and turn this on. Notice, it's on. Now, test point and set it. 
10 and a half. Test point number 10. 1.2. Okay, so now what's it tell us to do? It tells us to adjust VR3 and then VR02. So, make sure I'm right here. VR, first adjust VR03. So, this is going to be a little difficult. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. What is your deal? I'm going to go here and I'm going to do this right here. And if you're a little bit better at this than I am, you can get these to hold. Okay, so there. Now, what we want to do, we want to watch how sensitive this is. Okay, so we have to turn it left. But it's weird. Watch it drop like a rock. Okay, so we're at seven. Let's see what this has done to number 10. Now, you're going to watch me go back and forth here a little bit. Because look what we've done here. So we need to actually adjust this one first. And notice we're negative still. There. So we're at 2 millivolts, but we're... Oh. 7.6. 2.8. I wonder if I can get it even closer. Let us see. Four two. Four four. Aha, notice. The exact same. I will tell you after having done this a few times, this is probably the sweet spot. I made that look way too easy. The reason why this is probably the sweet spot is because I've actually done this with two volt ohm meters, and you watch them fluctuate in between the two. Generally, they about balance. I got very lucky in making these the same. So now, let's see what this did ro rotational speed-wise. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug my table, okay? Notice, everything's off. We de-energize it. We're not going to get bit now. So, number next thing. We're going to leave this open. We're going to set it down here and make sure that nothing is touching. Nothing is touching. And we're going to put the arm back where it goes. Okay, let me get us down here to where you guys can maybe see this. Matter of fact, hang on just a second. Okay, I, got, I brought you guys back around here to where we can kind of see this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set our turntable player back on here. And set our mat. And now let's see how stable the speed is. So I'm going to move this just a hair to where we can kind of get trained right there. And hopefully this will translate okay. Oh. Ah, I de-energized. My bad. I must now plug back in the turntable. I just didn't want this to get hurt. See, look at there. I'm too safe for my own good. Now then, let's see what we can do. OK. 
Okay, so well, fiddlesticks. It's got an auto return there now. Look at the blocks there. Watch them move. I'll let it rotate for just a minute. But you can see, well, with the exception of wanting to move now. You can see those are fairly stable now. These were moving, and sometimes just let these run for a minute, but they were moving quite a bit before. Let's look at 45 and see how that's working out. If I can find it. And if you look, we'll have to get down here at the bottom a little bit. Our 45 is pretty stable. Now let's go back down to 33. Now, if you've seen the blocks move, you'll see it's the second set of blocks here for 33. And that is a lot more stable than they were. But now that we have had this kind of running for a minute, let's take a couple, let's take a, some more measurements here. Just to make sure we're doing okay. Now, I'm going to pull a big no-no. I'm going to set it up vertically, but that's okay for this one. Okay, we got our camera shot back. Let's go ahead and kick this back on for time being. Let's measure our voltage again. So we got 2.2 here and 7.4 there. What happens if we switch it over to 45? 7.5, 2.2. May need to be readjusted just a bit. Uh, let's do that real quick. Which one was 7.5? Let's I think it was this one. 7.5. And notice I'm working this because it's weird. It's going back and forth. So I'm hoping it's got a little something in it. Keep in mind, when you're doing this, less is definitely more because these knobs are very, very sensitive. Back negative. Yeah, point two. Wouldn't that be nice? Let's see if the, let's see if that is going to fly. Point three. Point five. One point five. Huh? Now that those values look really good. So let's see again what this has done for our turntable. Okay, I got you guys moved back. 
put the turntable back on, player mat. It's going to try to do the breed check, so we're not going to pay attention to this right now. I see an arm lift, tick, tick, auto return, annoying. Okay, now let's look and see what's going on here now. And as you can see, our speed's really kind of settled down. Now, here's what I'll tell you. As it as an album plays, this actually gets even a little bit more stable as time goes on. It might get a little bit fast. This is not a quartz lock table. This is servo generated. So there are some variables, but that's pretty dang close. That's less than the plus or minus 3%. Let's take a look at the 45 here. I may have to... Get you guys up just a little higher to see it. And I, I'm working the pitch control right now. Yeah, that's settled right down too. Let's go back to 33. Just settled down nicely. Okay. So apparently every now and again, the universe tends to unfold the way it should and things turn out great like they just did here. I've got this guy adjusted back. Chances are, I mean, this thing is a, a 1979 turntable. It's like two years younger than I am. Uh, it's like 42 years old. This first time I've had to adjust the speed and it's probably been needing done for about six months. So let's say adjusting this DC offset First time 42 years, could there be some capacitors that need to be checked? More than likely, I didn't see any swelling or anything glaringly obvious in here. Some of them may be, you know, getting at the end of their useful tolerance as most electrolytic components do. But for now, I mean, this guy's straight and dried up. Um, so if you've acquired a vintage turntable like this, then maybe it's your DC balance that's off. Now here is the thing, all manufacturers and all things will be different. So make sure you get your service manual and have, get the you know optimal configuration and the optimal uh, tolerances and specs that you'll be measuring for as well as the right test points. Cause I mean, there are like 14 test points on here. If you don't know which ones you're measuring, then you're just, you know, stabbing in the dark um that being said a lot of these cec manufactured turntables marantz uh fisher uh mcs there's a long list cec was basically like last year's handpin you can look their arms all look similar their um layouts all do they manufactured you know things from some of their off-the-shelf designs some of them, they had designs from the manufacturer, like Fisher, 120 pole uh, motor. Mm, that's pretty unique to hear. If you're in a servo direct drive turntable though, and not a quartz lock direct drive turntable, and you've got pitch variance and speed, and you've kind of got a like a warble or some bad blow and flutter or something, you might want to look at this. If you've got a belt drive turntable, look at the belt first. If you've got rotational speed issues and your uh, uh, pitch is out of uh, balance uh, and you can't and there and you don't have like enough uh, 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 enough uh, room on your pitch dial to, to make it enough or less and it's direct drive, you can adjust the speed control in there. This one is dead on in the middle. It's okay. I've already adjusted it. I'll be forthright about it. So. Um, if you got a belt drive, look at your belt first. Make sure it's not worn. Replace the belt first. It's the cheapest and easiest thing you can do. If that fixes your speed issues, awesome. If not, you can look at the speed control underneath. Uh, similar thing. Make sure vinylengine.com, great place to get your service manuals. Uh, before you even start Googling, look there. A, a lot of us in that community have uploaded service manuals we found. It's a great resource. So really, all there is to do now is to put this guy back together and to sit down and enjoy some record. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. 
All right, guys. Awesome. I'll see you in the wrap up. And there you go, guys. Just like that. Old El Cheapo over here, aka my Fisher MT6330, back to making beautiful music. It's beautiful music you can't hear right now because I don't have the receiver on, but it is playing and I'm monitoring the speed and it is dead on accurate. I am very, very happy with these results. So, having seen me now open up a turntable, adjust the DC balance, reading the uh, manual, and now that you know where to get your service manuals from, hopefully this will empower you guys, you know, kind of a uh, release some of your apprehension, open yours up, and if it's broken already, it's not going to get any more broken than what it is. Um, so if you've got, you know, just a few basic tools, like a multimeter and a, uh, a screwdriver and uh, the ability to read a manual and understand it, hey, roll up your sleeves and do it. It's not gonna be terribly hard. Uh, keep in mind, your results are gonna vary. Opening up your turntable can be hazardous, and there is a chance that you can break it beyond all repair. So just keep that in mind. It does help to have a little bit of knowledge, but I did want to show you guys you know, just how easy it is to do some of this basic turntable maintenance yourself. It's stuff like adjusting your cartridge, adjusting speed rotation, and you know, adjusting the DC balance to keep your speed rotation going well on an older direct drive turntable. So I really hope you guys found this useful. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel before you go. And drop me a comment if you have any questions or anything I can do to help. I'm always quick to answer those comments and I hope to be helpful and a resource to this community. All right, guys. So I'm gonna go here and listen to my nicely adjusted Fisher turntable. And I'll see you guys in the next video, and I'm, uh, we'll see you guys later from Ben's Audio Cave. <laughs>